Opinions and ideas expressed in the following Moraine Valley Broadcast Channel recording are those of its creators and do not represent the views of Moraine Valley Community College. This year in Chemistry 132, we have spent a great deal on studying electrochemistry, which is the study of chemical processes that cause electrons to move. Looking at an equation, we have learned to identify what reactant is getting oxidized and which one is getting reduced by finding oxidation numbers. By doing so, we are then able to find half reaction equations for each substance in balance equation. A balanced chemical equation shows which substances are the products and which substances are the reactants, and the relative amounts of each. When speaking of concepts like electrochemistry or going through the process of balancing chemical equations, it is difficult to relate to everyday occurrences. But today, we would like to relate our background knowledge of electrochemistry to electrochemical storage systems of a very popular everyday item, the iPhone. Martha will begin our discussion by explaining different electrochemical systems and highlighting what electrical chemical system is found in our iPhones. I will explain the capture and storage of electrochemical energy. Energy storage is capturing and saving energy to use when it is needed. An example of electrochemical storage system is the ultra battery, which can be found in electric cars. It is a more recent storage system invented by the Australian government. Since we are not focused on electric and hybrid cars, we will brush over this storage system. A second type is the flow battery. It works by passing a solution over a membrane. The ions are then exchanged, which charges the cell. This battery is largely used to power the backup electric grid. Yet a different storage system is the supercapacitator. This is the bridge between conventional capacitors and rechargeable batteries. These batteries power various vehicles and even elevators. Lastly, there is the rechargeable battery, which is what we will be focused on. Rechargeable batteries contain one or more electrochemical cells and can go through the reaction in reverse. They have a lower environmental impact than dischargeable batteries. There are four types of these batteries. Lead acid, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, and lithium ion polymer. Our focus is going to be on lithium ion battery since that is what we find in our iPhones. Now that Martha has made us familiar with electrochemical systems used to power iPhones, Itzel will dissect the chemistry involved. The battery consists of metal oxide as a cathode and usually a carbon graphite as an anode. The electrolyte consists of lithium salt with an organic solvent and there is a permeable membrane as the separator in the battery. During discharging, the lithium ions flow from the anode to the cathode through the electrolyte and the separator. The anode also goes through oxidation as it loses electrons, while the cathode goes through reduction as it gains more electrons. During discharging, the direction reverses and the lithium ions flow from the cathode to the anode. So the anode goes through reduction and the cathode goes through oxidation. These lithium batteries all have allow iPhones to have high energy densities, longer run times, no memory effect, rechargeable, and be lightweight for its size. I wonder how long it has taken to perfect a process like this. Does there seem to be any problems within the reactions of these batteries? Yes, there are some problems that still remain when using these types of batteries. For instance, the need of a longer battery life has been stressed from the public during the past few years. Research has shown that replacing the cathode and electrolytes might help solve this problem. For instance, Apple has been looking at using ceramic cathodes or glass electrolytes that are more durable. The batteries will then last much longer due to the higher energy densities. Research has also headed to building better batteries through nanotechnology. Lithium ion batteries with electrodes of silicone instead of the standard graphite have been considered since in a graphite anode, it takes six carbon atoms to hold one lithium ion, while in a silicone anode, it takes only four silicone atoms, which is a huge advantage. Yet, the problem that silicone faces is that silicone anodes swell and shrink as batteries charge and discharge, eventually driving the anode to disintegrate. 
Speaking of the iPhone company, Apple and its research, let us have Brenda explain the importance of the iPhone in terms of battery quality. Apple lithium ion battery uses fast charging to quickly reach 80%. After the 80%, it switches to a slower charge to extend battery lifespan. The capacity of any type of battery will diminish after a certain amount of recharging. Normal with lithium ion batteries capacity diminishes slightly with each complete charge cycle. But Apple lithium ion batteries are designed to hold at least 80% of their original capacity for a high number of charge cycles. This is important to have on an iPhone product because we as consumers want to rely that our phone will last through a day of being on the go. When battery cycles are more efficient for a longer time frame, iPhones become a longer lasting product. Battery life is basically the currency of mobile device. Because the more apps and features are downloading, the more battery life is sacrificed. iPhone batteries are designed to perform well in a wide range of room temperatures between 32 Fahrenheit and 95 Fahrenheit. Coming to think of it, my iPhone would suddenly shut off in the winter. Why does this happen? Temperature will affect the chemistry of the battery. This is because a decrease in temperature prevents electrons from normal flow. Therefore, device can shut off. Likewise, an increase in temperature occurs, the electrons are excited and a phone could overheat. Constant temperature change in high humidity can cause formation of condensation. That makes so much sense. The chemical reaction is interrupted by the temperature change causing iPhone batteries to malfunction. As a consumer, this might seem like a flaw. Xiomara will help explain what parameters consumers look for in these batteries. The efficiency of the convenience of these batteries is what attracts the consumers the most. As one of many consumers of lithium ion batteries, one of the main factors that I, like many others, look for in these batteries is the decent charge times and a high number of discharge cycles before they die. Like Brenda stated before, lithium batteries allowed to be recharged with minimal loss of capacity compared to other batteries, which is an advantage. Other advantages are the low maintenance of these batteries and their high energy density. Lithium ion batteries were probably not always as efficient. How have they improved? Also, are there any problems concerning these batteries? Consumers search for batteries that have long battery run times. As a result of this demand, makers of this product have packed more active material into a cell and made the electrolytes and separator thinner. Throughout the years, the battery has improved by doubling energy density since it was first made. The positive effect of this, as I stated before, is that lithium ion battery possesses high energy density, which is an advantage from other rechargeable batteries. Lithium stores 150 watts per hour of energy for each kilogram. Other batteries such as nickel metal hydride packs 60 to 70 watts per hour for each kilogram and lead acid only stores 25 watts per hour per kilogram. There is a downside to this being that lithium ion batteries are comprised of lithium cobalt oxide which is prone to overheating and combustion if it is severely overcharged. In several incidents batteries have caught on fire such as the Samsung Galaxy Note that exploded on a plane. In cases like these, the cobalt cathode should not reach higher than 130 degrees. If it does, cells become unstable. This instability causes the overheating of one cell to transfer to the next, which creates a combustion. To answer your question about problems, aging is a major problem, which lithium ion batteries, according to Battery University, the battery frequently fails after two or three years. Other limitations that seem to make these kind of batteries problematic is a required protection to allow for the voltage and proper functioning of the battery. The protective coating decreases the portion for energy storage after time. This protection also accounts for the high cost of production, which does not equate to its short-lasting efficiency. Lithium batteries are about 40% more expensive to make than nickel cadmium cells. Wow, that sure was a lot of useful information to think about when shopping for an iPhone. Thank you, Siomara. All this talk about iPhones, but we have neglected the fact that this energy has to come from somewhere. To continue our discussion, Damien will slightly diverge to talk about the different types of energy sources and how fossil fuels compare to other options. There are 10 different types of energy. Solar, wind, geothermal, hydrogen, tidal, wave, hydroelectric, biomass, nuclear, and fossil fuels. Can you explain each energy source to help us get a better understanding? Solar energy is harvested through the energy of the sun into collector pans. 
but is ineffective in certain regions that don't receive enough sunlight. Wind energy uses huge turbines to spin wind and convert it into electricity, but has drawbacks because it takes lots of space. Geothermal energy is the energy produced from beneath the earth and is environmentally friendly, but only select regions can harness this energy. Hydrogen energy is used with water to produce electricity. Tidal energy uses the rise and fall of waves to convert kinetic energy into electric energy. Wave energy is produced from the waves in the ocean, but can hurt marine wildlife. Hydroelectric energy is used with dams that contain turbines that spin energy, but has drawbacks because many of the dams are very old and need restoration, which costs tons of money. Biomass energy is produced from organic material, but produces a lot of carbon dioxide emission. Nuclear energy creates energy through a specific nuclear reaction, but disposal methods make scientists question its use. Lastly, fossil fuels use coal, oil, and natural gases to create energy. It is the most widely used energy resource on the planet, but has two major drawbacks. The process to create this energy highly pollutes the environment, and we are very limited with fossil fuels. Ultimately, it is difficult to say which energy would be the best for iPhones, because all have drawbacks and benefits. Once energy is harvested in one of these 10 ways, how does it get distributed? Marcin will help us explain the electric grid. An electric grid is an interconnected network for delivering electricity from suppliers to consumers. It consists of generating stations that produce electrical power, high voltage transmission lines that carry power from distant sources to demand centers, and distribution line that connects individual customers. The electricity grid is a complex and incredibly important system, and one of the most impressive engineering feats of the modern era. It transmits power generated at a variety of facilities and distributes it to end users, often over long distances. It provides electricity to buildings, industrial facilities, schools, and homes, and it does so every minute of every day year-round. That sums up our discussion. We have successfully discussed energy sources and how the energy travels through the electrical grid into our homes. This supplies our iPhones that have lithium-ion batteries, energy to charge as connecting a device creates a current and the electrons flow through the device to the positive side. Our discussion communicated how the lithium-ion battery has improved and what areas still need work. Hopefully, future research will solve our battery problems. Thank you for your time. It's time for us to log off.